everybody, it's Charlie from Daily Motor. And today we've got this ZR2 V6 Chevy Colorado tugging this 2020 Honda Talon 1000X4. On this steel trailer, along with the side-by-side, -side, it should weigh just under 4,000 pounds or so, which is actually only about 1,000 pounds less than the factory recommended tow max for the Colorado ZR2. The most powerful Colorado can do 7,000 pounds, but with the ZR2 package, these tires, the suspension, only rated at 5,000 with this V6 motor. We've been having a ton of fun with both vehicles. Check the links in the description for all sorts of shenanigans. We've got off-road videos of the Colorado, off-road videos, dune videos of the Talon. We've got a race video between the two, on-road and off-road. Whole lot of fun. Check it out. But for this one, let's get behind the wheel and get towing. Ah, it starts with one of my first complaints with the Colorado. 45 grand and you still have a physical key that you have to use. Never get used to that. I know it sounds spoiled, but once you get used to having a proxy key in your pocket, it's tough to go back. So we've put probably about 700 miles towing with this, uh, this setup. And I've also towed this setup with other vehicles, including competitor to the Colorado, the V6 Honda Ridgeline. And interestingly enough, I preferred the Ridgeline for towing. I know I'm kind of comparing apples to oranges considering this is a taller off-road oriented mid-size pickup truck, whereas the Ridgeline is lower down, a little more streamlined, a little softer suspension, but hey, this is a truck thing after all, isn't it? So the fact that the Ridgeline did better at a truck activity, quote unquote, kind of interesting. Part of that has to do with the suspension here in the ZR2. You feel a lot. It almost actually rides a little bit better with the trailer there, kind of weighting things down, but you just get a lot of shocks and judders sent from the trailer into the truck and these big off-road oriented shocks just have a tough time filtering those out. So this will be a good intro here. We've got to get up to speed at a relatively quick pace. We're gonna pull out hard here, get straightened out, and then actually full throttle. And yellow lights, so <laughs> we're gonna to have to come right back to a stop. Sometimes that's just how towing goes. Even though the Colorado is a little narrower than a full-size truck, don't have too much trouble seeing behind a trailer like this. Don't really mind that. We're going to shift over here, avoid a little bit of traffic. Brakes have seemed more than adequate for flatland towing. Haven't had any issues with that. The engine, take it or leave it. 308 horsepower V6, definitely the most widely versatile powertrain option in the Colorado. I spent a good amount of time and actually did a similar trip to this in a ZR2 Bison with the diesel motor, and I actually like that motor quite a bit. I think it would be a little bit better for towing, but I do wonder how it would do on the highway at highway speeds. Trying to get up to speed with that lower horsepower figure, it might really take a while to accelerate. But it also might not have to shift as much. This eight speed with the V6, never really settles in the top gear. Sometimes when you're going downhill, it'll get down into eighth gear, but it's always kind of sixth or seventh, sometimes even fifth. I've had to go down into fourth and third, getting up taller hills at highway speeds. We'll see that here in a little bit. We'll get up on the highway. It doesn't feel as happy to rev as the Ridgeline's motor. The Ridgeline, even when it did have to downshift with its 10-speed transmission, it never felt like it was the wrong thing to do. It was kind of like, oh, the engine's hanging out at 3,500 RPM. That's fine, it's a Honda motor. This engine sounds more taxed when it has to do that. Also, the fuel economy has been a big disappointment. When I found out we'd be towing with this truck, I was like, oh great, that'll help us save some dollars on fuel, getting a little bit better gas mileage than we would with a full-size truck. But here we are, out of the last three vehicles I've towed with, the Ridgeline, the Navigator Black Label, and then this, by far the worst fuel economy, at least according to the trip computer. Over 665 miles, which, mind you, has included a little bit of filming. We're averaging 11.7 miles to the gallon. Oh boy, not fantastic. I hope a large part of that is attributed to 
the higher ground clearance of the ZR2, it's pushing more air, these knobbier tires have more rolling resistance. I really hope that's attributing to it, but I also just think that this engine's not as happy to tug along at these higher, uh, higher difficulty modes, if you will. Creature comfort's pretty decent. These seats aren't the most comfortable in the world, but I was actually fine over four hours. It is a little bit frustrating that there's manual recline, even though the other controls are power. It's gonna be a decent amount of space to put everything. I could go with a more compact shifter, but all of these buttons and all the HVAC controls and the infotainment screen are pretty easy to use, even with gloves on, which is nice. Good feel coming over these bumps. A lot's being shuttered into the cabin. And because we've got these stiff off-road shocks, it's just a pretty firm, juddery ride. Lower speed towing really isn't too bad with this truck. It's more so just when you get up to highway speeds. Noise levels are actually pretty darn good. I was impressed by that. I expected the tire noise to be worse with these knobbier tires. It's really not too bad. Wind noise isn't too bad. And engine noise is probably the loudest thing. Trans temps stay very cool. We're up to 132 now, but that's about the highest I've seen in a long time. And I've been kind of hard on it these last few minutes. I'm gonna set the cruise at 70. Just see how the truck manages. We're in sixth gear right now, doing 70 miles per hour. Relatively flat land. This is just kind of what it's like. Tugging with the ZR2. Hanging out at six gear, 2700 RPM at 70. It's certainly a truck that can tow but it's not the truck I would buy if your intention is regularly towing three to 4,000 pounds or above. When you're in tow mode, the merge blinker, when you just tap the blinker up or down one touch, it actually blinks six times instead of three. Maybe we'll get a Ford Ranger in here sometime and a Nissan Frontier. Let's see if we can get an opportunity to tow the same setup with those trucks and see how they fare, but if you're gonna get a Colorado for towing, at least try some of the other trims. I can't imagine the ZR2 is doing any favors. Once we get back here, lower speed driving. Engine doesn't feel overtaxed to get up to speed. So shorter trips, probably the better way to use your ZR2 for towing. That's a nice looking white Colorado, I like that. I'd probably rather take one of those than the ZR2. The ZR2 was really good off-road. If you guys want to see footage of that, hit that subscribe button and check out the links in the description. If you want to see more on the talons, we got links in the description for that as well. You gotta try to, these silly little runners that uh, like frame sliders, rock sliders, you have to make sure you step way over them lest you get your pants dirty. And speaking of dirty, you can see I did a very poor job to car wash, but only had limited time, limited amount of quarters to wash these with. So that's the ZR2 tugging 4,000 pounds. It could do it, but it's not the best tool for the job. Thank you all so much for watching, and we'll see you on the next one. I'm Charlie from Daily Motor, and as always, drive on. Mm -hmm.